When Sunday morning called and asked if I thought older is better, I said, of course, because I thought they were talking about wine or, or Greek ruins. And then I realized they were talking about people, old people. And I thought, <laughs> why ask more? Did I say that already? Anyhow, first of all, I do not think I'm old. Sure, I'm probably the only woman in New York City who has an autographed copy of the Ten Commandments signed by the author. But then I decided maybe I am what the French call a woman of a certain age. The term a woman of a certain age, by the way, means a woman who can make her own way to the intensive care ward of any hospital or to the depends counter of any drugstore who is still considered arm candy for men like Strom Thurmond and the Pope. And then after sitting around and thinking about it for a while, I realized that being older is better. L let me give you some examples. Take your eyesight, for example. Even with glasses, as we get older, our eyesight just gets so blurred you can't see anything. So when you look in the mirror, even on a lousy day, you look great. And older is better because old people know things that young people don't know, such as how to speak in complete sentences and, and, and who won World War II, and that there are questions that cannot be answered by hello and whatever and duh. And most important of all, you know that sex doesn't have to be great as long as the hotel you're having it in is. Oh, sure, sometimes I say to myself, Joan, 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 come on, you'd like to be younger, wouldn't you? But overall, I think age is great. First of all, men snoring no longer bothers me. I'm hard of hearing. And I'm never, never, never bored. I have 20 minutes myself. I just play connect the liver spots on my hands. And I no longer have to worry about my panty lines. My breasts cover them. And as far as filling my days, <laughs> you are looking at Miss Popular. I'm not bragging, but you know I am invited to at least three, maybe four funerals a day. And do you want to know what is the best, 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 best thing about aging? When you're old, everybody thinks you're wise, which is just dandy. Even though the truth is, you're not wise. It's just the people that know how stupid you are are dead. Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. That's an old theater adage that holds true with stand-up comics today. Almo Rocca has talked to a few of the best. Joan Rivers is a comedy legend. Oh, let's talk. You know? Here she is in Atlantic City. How stupid do I look? Don't answer that. It, <laughs> we're in New Jersey. I've heard about your educational system. It is, oh, oh, But even oh, legends oh, can sure. lose an audience. Oh, sure, turn against me, that's fast. In the first minute and a half, I've already lost you. After nearly 50 years on stage, the fear of dying still grips her. Terror. I'm dreading that they're not going to think I'm funny. And I'm back to first grade. Uh, you're taking me back, like when, your... when you try to make a friend and somebody says, I don't want to be friends with you. It's that, it's that basic. We don't like you. We don't want to be your friends. It's... It's terrible. Mom? Joan and daughter Melissa have their own cable TV series. This is great. What are you look doing? Look at all the space back there. Oh, look at this group. Who? It's but Joan, at 80, still risks death live on stage. The title of her upcoming tour? Quick before they close the lid. Oh, God, this is horrible. But how do you think actual death will compare with dying on stage? I think actual death would be a lot easier than dying on stage because, uh, you know, if you do it right, you can go looking good, maybe with a little quip. I loved everybody, <laughs> but dying on stage, oh, God, yeah. it's just shame. Shame. How do you scrub it off? Shame stays with you until the next night when you go on stage and you prove, no, no, no. I'm right, they were wrong last night. Our collective sense of humor lost a bit of its edge this week with the passing of Joan Rivers, whose funeral will be held this morning in New York City. Richard Schlesinger pays tribute. Oh, grow up! 
Joan Rivers once said she succeeded by saying what everyone else was thinking. And sometimes she said things we'd rather not think about. And the body drops, my breasts. I can have a mammogram and a pedicure at the same time. And if you can laugh about horror, you can deal with horror. Yeah, but some horrors aren't so easy to laugh at. That's why we should laugh at them. Later on Sunday morning, Joan Rivers, an appreciation. As we mentioned earlier, there will be funeral services in New York City today for Joan Rivers. And while authorities look into the cause of her death, her fans in and out of show business are focusing on her legacy of laughter. Richard Schlesinger remembers. I had a hot flash yesterday so bad it, it melted my IUG. I mean... In Joan Rivers' eyes, there were no limits, there were no boundaries, and everything was fair game. And people treat you terribly when you're old, you know? They treat you like, a, like a, a, with a little disdain. I was on the Today Show, Al Roker. Here's Joan Rivers, and she's 78 years young. And you want to go, and here's Al Roker, and he's 320 pounds thin. And it, oh. She took a little getting used to. Most of the stuff that came out of her mouth was not in the best taste. My sex life is so bad, my G-spot has, has been declared a historical landmark. <laughs> For a woman who left nothing unsaid, there are few details of her passing. We do know the 81-year-old comic reportedly went into cardiac arrest August 28th during a routine medical procedure. She was rushed to New York's Mount Sinai Hospital where she died Thursday. She is survived by a daughter, Melissa, who said in a statement, my mother's greatest joy in life was to make people laugh. Although that is difficult to do right now, I know her final wish would be that we return to laughing soon. It was a quiet end to a life lived at full volume. When I was 21, my mother said, only a doctor for you. When I was 22, she said, all right, a lawyer, CPA. 24, she said, well, grab a dentist. 26, she said, anything. On stage, she was brutally honest, merciless even. Good, but the woman is a tramp. Her towels say his and her piece. I, oh, yes. And her favorite target was often herself, her age, her sex life, and, of course... Her face. Rivers once said that she'd had so much plastic surgery that when she died, they donate her body to Tupperware. You don't look exactly like the Joan Rivers I used to know. No. <laughs> but I take that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. I take no, I'm just scared when I die, I'll get to heaven and God won't recognize yeah, me. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She was born Joan Alexandra Malinsky in Brooklyn and raised in the New York suburbs. And she was no dummy. She was an honors grad from Barnard College with a degree in literature. Everywhere you look, if you really look around the house, there are bookshelves. Uh -huh. At home, she had an extensive library. But as she told me in 2010, she never wanted to be anywhere but on the stage. It's like a nun's calling. This is what I want. This is where I want. This is what I'm supposed to do. That sounds so stupid. This is what I'm supposed to do. Rivers had little success until February 1965. That's when Johnny Carson saw her and gave her a shot on his show. She was 31 and unknown, but not for much longer. Would you welcome, please, Joan Rivers. When we first started dating, Edgar would run around, open the car door for me, and then we got engaged, and, you know, we each opened our own door. And now that we're married, Edgar runs, you know, makes me run around and open his door. And uh, you feel like a fool because we don't have a car. <laughs> Joan Rivers became a fixture on The Tonight Show for the next 20 years. But she and Johnny Carson were never close. Ice cold off camera. Mean or just cold? Cold. Uh, only mean to me at the end. Maybe mean, but I never was friendly with him. Not warm. I worked on that show 20 years. Was never invited to the Christmas party. Was never meant... Was never... Um, 
I never was included in the Carson family. But it didn't matter. It gave me my whole, my God, what it gave me. It gave me the world. Don't you think men really like intelligence more when it comes right down to it? Oh, what? please. Are we going to go back to that? Are you, you know, kidding? Sure. I mean, oh. it's a brain, you know, a caring person. No man person. has ever put his hand up a woman's dress looking for a library card. <laughs> A few weeks after this show, Rivers launched her own late-night program on the Fox Network, and Johnny Carson never spoke to her again. And I am just so, so happy to be here, and I thank you all so much. But there was worse to come. Joan was fired from her talk show, and barely three months after that, her husband, Edgar Rosenberg, killed himself. She was widowed, unemployed, and practically banned from late-night TV. So Joan Rivers needed to remake herself, and she did. Look, I've been wearing it. You look gorgeous. I am in love with this. She made a fortune hawking her own line of jewelry and handbags on TV. I'm doing better than you. Check the bag. But as she told Tracy Smith, she got into the business because she had nowhere else to go. And I was desperate. Were you desperate? I was desperate. Desperate for what? Desperate for something to do. My husband committed suicide. My Vegas contract was gone. I had been fired from Fox publicly. I had to find something fast. So here, this career of kind of last resort ends up turning into this? Turning into this. So I go through every door. You never know. Of course, her favorite door was always the stage door. And before long, she was back under the lights. Oh, grow up! She was good in the retail business, but she was great at the funny business. My day having a child was better. They knocked you out with the first pain, they woke you up in the hairdresser show. You knew nothing. It was so much better. Up until last week, Joan Rivers kept a schedule most younger comics could only dream of. Wednesday, Florida, breakfast lecture, good afternoon book signing, back to Miami, perform two shows. Thursday. She was too busy to retire and much too driven to stop. I could die any moment now. You know how lucky you guys would be? You would get for the price of a ticket, you would get a show and a death. Do you understand? Rivers would talk freely about her own death. As she told Mo Rocca earlier this year, death didn't scare her, it was dying. But how do you think actual death will compare with dying on stage? I think actual death would be a lot easier than dying on stage. Because, uh, you know, if you do it right, you can go looking good and maybe with a little quip. I loved everybody. But dying on stage, oh, God. All I ever heard growing up is, why can't you be like your cousin Sheila? Why can't you be like your cousin Sheila? Sheila had died at birth. They just... In stand-up comic terms, Joan Rivers killed more than she ever died. And that may make her death a little tough to take, because you just know she would have had something perfect to say about all this. I think life is great, and boy, oh boy, when I die, they're going to say, she had a good time. The life and career of Joan Rivers are inspiring reflection and gratitude in other women of humor, such as our own Nancy Giles. Do yourself a favor and read Enter Talking, Joan Rivers' poignant and hilarious story of her early years as chubby Joan Malinsky with a beautiful sister and a bucket of insecurities. She married because a girl her age should get married and divorced soon after, moving back in with her parents, totally defeated but for a dream that she dared not speak, to be some kind of entertainer, in spite of being told again and again, including by her parents, after her act flopped at the synagogue, that she was absolutely without talent. She performed in church basements and way off Broadway. She wrote jokes, bought jokes, changed her name, at one point even billing herself as Pepper January, comedy with spice. And through her failures, Joan Rivers found her comedic voice, 
I had found the key, she wrote. My comedy would flow from that poor, vulnerable schlep, Joan Malinsky, the nerd I felt sorry for. This was in the 50s and 60s when being a stand-up comedian was about as respectable as being a stripper. Being a female comedian was simply unheard of. But she persevered. Her life began, she said, one night in 1965, when, as a last-minute replacement, she made her first appearance on The Tonight Show and made Johnny laugh, really laugh, wiping his eyes and declaring, you're going to be a star. Joan Rivers' face was so expressive and so wonderfully goofy, I wish she'd left it alone. But that was her choice, and, to her credit, she never lied about her cosmetic surgeries, using them, too, as material, with lines like, I wish I had a twin so I could know what I'd look like without plastic surgery. Or, my breasts are so low now, I can have a mammogram and a pedicure at the same time. But as crass as her humor could be, she was a classy lady with fine tastes and exquisite manners who regularly sent thank you notes and flowers to co-workers. And talk about a work ethic. At 81, she was still on stage, trying out new jokes. She was an inspiration. Like Moms Mabley, Phyllis Diller, and Toady Fields, she helped dispel the myth that women aren't funny. Someone once said, if you can see it, you can be it. Thanks to the trailblazers like Joan Rivers, generations of funny girls can see it and be funny on their own terms. We stand on their shoulders gratefully.